are taking things all the way to Scotland as we ask is the Loch Ness Monster real? The Loch Ness Monster is said to be a giant aquatic being that lives in the Loch Ness in the Scottish Islands. Named Nessie, the lake dwelling creature has stirred up quite the debate over the last 85 or so years since the infamous first picture of the monster appeared. While Nessie's fame has reached a paramount in this time, the legend of a creature living in the lake goes as far back as the Viking ages. But of course, in these times, people believed that dragons also existed. So, largely accepted as myth and legend of the local area, there were of course some who say they had seen the monster firsthand, but it wasn't until around the third of the way through the 20th century that sightings started to make the press. The first notable account of the creature was from George Spicer in 1933, which gave Nessie her form in popular culture. Spicer said that he and his wife saw a most extraordinary animal cross the road in front of their car as they drove near the loch. They described the monster as having a long, wavy, narrow neck, slightly thicker than an elephant's trunk, 4 foot high and 12 foot long. The same year, a motorcyclist claimed to almost run over something of the same description before it slithered into the lake. Then of course came the infamous surgeon's photo of Nessie in 1934. This showed a neck protruding from the water. While the authenticity of this picture has been much debated, it certainly opened the floodgate for all Nessie related materials. Since then, there have been countless eyewitness accounts, photographs and even some films that appear to prove Nessie's existence. The problem is, as we know, eyewitnesses, photographs and even videos cannot be fully seen as proof. There is so much technology and artistic license available that it is possible to create a convincing fake. More people claim to have seen and have been abducted by aliens, but without solid scientific proof, we can never believe them either. Nonetheless, persistent belief in Nessie led to the creation of the Loch Ness Phenomenon Investigations Bureau. This ran between 1962 and 1972. Interesting it also led to sonar studies of the lake. Pictures and videos are easy to fake. But what about sonar findings? Sonar enables detection of objects underwater by measuring a water's depth using sound pulses. There have been several sonar studies of the Loch Ness and many of them have actually yielded results. In December 1954, sonar readings were taken by a fishing boat that detected a large object swimming beneath the boat for 800 meters. Again, sonar studies in the 60s, 70s and 80s took place, all yielding some results of no often picking up moving objects of an unusual size. As recently as 2011, sonar has thrown up questions, but we still can't prove any of the objects picked up were Nessie. If sonar can't prove it, and if images captured of Nessie aren't enough, what can we actually do to dispel or prove the rumours once and for all? I guess you could go down to Loch Ness and tirelessly search the water for the thing. Problem is, people have actually tried that already, to no avail. Operation Deep Deep scan in 1987 took 24 boats into the water, and again in 2003, the BBC searched the loch with 600 sonar beams and satellite tracking. Nothing was found. Either Nessie is pretty shy and managing to hide somewhere pretty unnoticeable, or she doesn't exist. That's the thing though, Loch Ness is 227 meters deep, with plenty of inaccessible, deep trenches that she could in theory hide in. The waters are murky too, which means diving to find Nessie is pretty much futile. Okay, one important thing that we need to discuss before we can answer our question is, what kind of creature is Nessie anyway? Would the loch be a good habitat for her? Cryptozoologists think that Nessie is a surviving plesiosaur. This was a long necked dinosaur that was supposed to have gone extinct millions of years ago. Although the plesiosaur has been linked to reports of modern day sightings. Could a plesiosaur live in Loch Ness? Well, with difficulty. The log isn't really that big and is probably a touch too cold for a reptile. Also, if Nessie was going to have survived all this time, there would need to be other plesiosaurs out there, a whole colony of them in Loch Ness. The infrequent nature of the sightings suggests that actually this wasn't the way of things. There also isn't enough fish in the loch to sustain a family of dinosaurs of her reported size. Against the odds, if Nessie did somehow survive and is living in a colony in the depths of Loch Ness, surely someone would have found some bones of her ancestors nearby. Nowhere around the area, or indeed in the lake, have water dwelling dinosaur bones been discovered. Okay, so 
Nessie. It is possible that something big could have swam in from the Atlantic and up the small river Ness into the lock, but still, did it? And if it did, is it really still alive? Is there anything hiding beneath the murky depths of this small body of water in the highlands of Scotland? If so, why have we never been able to prove it? After all that searching, millions upon millions of pounds spent looking, really, wouldn't we have seen something conclusive by now? When it comes to Loch Ness, the lack of evidence speaks louder than the small amount of unverifiable images and accounts. Is the Loch Ness monster real? Undoubtedly, people people want her to be. I could tell you what I think, I could tell you what conclusion any impartial observer would be forced to acknowledge, but isn't it more fun to keep on believing? After all, I know by now that you can't kill a legend with science. Swim on Nessie, you Scottish beauty! So thanks guys for watching Life's Biggest Questions, do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'm Rebecca Felgate, for now, remember to stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning. <laughs>